I cannot wait to watch content creators play this game and show us what it makes them feel. Because that's that's the whole point. An experience to give people strong emotions. And I know for a fact that it's going to happen. Either of you heard of Murder Mail? No! No! Talking to Trace Tuft and Matthew Cott from... Uh, Supermassive Games and Behaviour Interactive, who've teamed up on the casting of Frank Stone. Um, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about that? We at Behaviour have been wanting to find a way to tell more stories of the dead by daylight for a while. One of the ways we wanted to do this was through a, a single player narrative experience, which is very, very different, obviously, from the, the regular dead by daylight experience, but we know that we have a lot of fans out there who, who don't necessarily play the game. They're just fans. They're, they're maker of fan art or cosplay. They're people who uh, spend a lot of time watching their favorite content creators play the game. So they, they know of the game, they live it, but they haven't experienced it for themselves. Uh, we wanted to do a completely different experience and we went out trying to find who the best in the biz are. Well, I mean, we knew who the best in the biz uh, are. Uh, we just, we're trying to woo them into uh, getting into this this partnership with us. And today, well, almost in a couple of weeks now, uh, people will be able to finally get their grubby little hands on it. At the Supermassive Perspective, yeah, we were um, thrilled to partner with Behavior on the casting of Frank Stone. It's been absolutely wonderful to get our grubby little hands on the world of Dead by Daylight um, and, and tell an original story in the Omniverse. So, yeah, hugely exciting from our side as well. Dead by Daylight is a sort of asymmetric multiplayer game um, with a group of players playing as survivors and another player playing as a killer. Uh, and the survivors have to evade the killer. And Supermassive are well known for sort of narrative, often called choose your own adventure type games. Um, Until Dawn, I think, is probably still the most famous one. Um, but they are very popular, been going. How long has been going there, Supermassive? Oh, I think this is year 15, Gosh, if I haven't wow. gotten it wrong. Time flies, doesn't it? And yeah, and so, and Supermassive yeah, works in the horror field. Um, so it, from that, in that respect, it is a pretty obvious pairing. Um, and in terms of coming up with Frank Stone, I'm right that he doesn't appear as a character in, in Dead by Daylight, right? Uh, not in the current roster, you are absolutely correct. And so he was an original creation. Did that come from the behavior side or the supermassive side? It, it was, it was, a. I think it was a common affair, that specific character. Uh, but the, the, the brunt of the story is, is from supermassive, right? We, we made sure that we gave them all the lore books and the, the, the Bibles that we accumulated and all the knowledge that we had. And we asked them to craft a really compelling story. That's what they do. In that respect, I, I guess um, it, it involves a lot of trust, and I think I'm right that is it the first time Supermassive's made one of its narrative games based on a kind of third party IP, um, which must be interesting for you guys, and also from the behavior side, you kind of trust in someone else with, with your baby in a way. Um, was that a, a tricky road to navigate, or um, was it fairly smooth? Um, the casting of Frank Stone is the first time we've made a cinematic game kind of in somebody else's IP, in somebody else's world. Um, and it has involved a lot of close collaboration. Um, the Dead by Daylight fan base is in incredible. Um, they, they know this world inside and out. And so trying to be very mindful of the lore that exists, understanding where we can, we can kind of push into new areas um, because the casting of Frank Stone does have an original cast it's original cast of characters it's an original story set outside the entities realm so yeah so we are definitely bringing something new to dbd players who know the game well um but also uh the hope is that people that don't know dbd are going to have a, a really engaging narrative story to enjoy as well the the fact that dead by daylight was originally built as a sort of a a, a love letter to horror right to all the the inspirations that we have dating back to the 70s and 80s like early horror stuff and super massive is of course these these classic horror tropes and these stories uh they were very very well versed in them so it was easy for us to have a common language at the very beginning which helped build that trust uh, and it, it was great. And so this this game, the casting of Frank Stone, is really set in in that sort of mood of the the very classic horror 
things with a few obviously there's a lot of twists in there and surprises but but the the root is that deep love of horror storytelling and and that made it much easier because you're right uh, for behavior we have a 30 year history of making games for other people and taking other people's ips and treating them right and and honoring them uh, i mean we've showed that in, in dead by daylight also we have so many iconic licenses in there already but it was sort of the first time we were taking our baby as you put it and, and giving it to someone else and say please be careful uh, so yeah it was a learning experience i think for us uh, and and we 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 strive to be the the client that we've always wanted to have to a certain extent, and hopefully we've somewhat succeeded in this. But yeah, that base of similarity between the studios, the love for horror, kind of the the respect for um, all the genres, um, all the different tropes. Um, I, I think that really created a solid foundation and you see that through the casting of frank stone you see kind of those ideas that both studios and both teams love you see some of that shine in the in the game i guess from the behavior side you kind of left supermassive to do what they do best but we maybe keeping tabs on on the law that you mentioned i know that's um quite complicated and that's something that fans are often very sensitive about right um but i guess it sounds yeah. like it's a case of um giving supermassive if not free reign um letting them well, yeah. it was it was free reign, but we were always available, right? And we always wanted to be there to discuss and and comment. Uh, but but yeah, it's it's about building trust, and that happened very very quickly. Uh, of course, we wanted to make sure that the the some of the 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 rules that we've created in our universe were not broken. They could be bent a little, but you know there are things that we established in the in what makes up the world of dead by daylight that we wanted to to continue and to to maintain uh, and and that was that was rather easy those weren't the difficult conversations uh, it's it's really because when you have a lot of passionate creative people everybody's got ideas on how things should go what characters should do and these i wouldn't say they were difficult conversations but they were probably the most uh, vigorous ones. We talked a lot about the Dead by Daylight fan base, which, which is very big. And obviously, Supermassive has also got some very dedicated fans and who sort of lap up um, any new release in, in the Dark Pictures anthology or some of the sort of bigger standalone titles. And they also there is a group of people that sort of say, oh, they can be a bit samey, which is fair or unfair, depending on your view. Um, but there's... Is there anything new sort of gameplay wise people can expect this time? I think in the preview build that was sent around, which is about an hour, I think there was a few new mechanics that were slightly influenced by Dead by Daylight, right? So, of course, we leaned right into some of the tropes from Dead by Daylight. So those are going to be very familiar to DVD players who choose to play the cast in a Frank Stone. Um, we've incorporated some of that into just our general exploration. Also, some of our quick time events are very much inspired or in some cases kind of a, a direct homage to, <laughs> to DVD. <laughs> Um, but we also um, have some additional, some other new features that are completely unique to the casting of Frank Stone. Um, for instance, we have um, kind of our, our camera system that allows the players to um, capture and record. Um, as you may or may not know, the story is, is based around a group of teenagers in 1980 trying to make a horror film. Um, and the, the camera they use for their filming um, is going to capture a bit more than maybe they expected. Um, and that's a new mechanic that we're introducing for the casting of Frank Stone. We also have a new local dialogue continuation system that allows the player to choose if they continue to engage with their their other characters or not. So yeah, there's a, there's a couple new innovations there that we're quite excited about. We also have an exciting new feature called the cutting room floor that um, is really one of the first times where we've actually really attempted to map the different branches and the different paths through the story that offers, um, you know, kind of an incredible replay capability for players to go back and explore different paths, explore different choices, different decisions that could completely change their gameplay outcome. So, so, so yeah, there's a lot of classic supermassive stuff in there. There's a lot of kind of homage to DVD in there. And there's also some stuff that is uniquely for the casting of Frank Stone. In terms of, we've talked about sort of who the game's for. Um, so we, there's people that play Dead by Daylight. There's people that like to watch Dead by Daylight. And uh, we hear a lot about kind of, growth being an aspiration in the games industry. It, what's the kind of goal for both companies with the game ultimately? Is it to bring 
Is it to turn supermassive fans into Dead by Daylight fans, or, or what's the kind of hope there? Oh, okay. Go ahead, Matt. You go ahead. <laughs> uh, for, for us, I mean, like I said, the, the original objective, the, the, the trigger of all of this for us was really to give our hardcore fans and, and our the people that are already living in the Dead by Daylight universe something else to experience our world, right? It was to, it, it's not something to, to, to grow our fan base. I mean, hopefully if it does, wonderful. But the, but the idea is really to give people another way to experience our universe and to, to sort of grow the, the, the reach of the, 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 the Dead by Daylight universe. And that's it. Also, because we are driven mostly because we're gamers at heart, we wanted this game to happen. We wanted this game to exist. And the fact that it's being made by someone else, I mean, strangely enough, as a developer, when, when you build a game, you tend to not play it afterwards, right? It's just like you've you've seen how the sausage is made. <laughs> uh, but, but now I'll have the joy of being able to, even though I, I know quite a lot about the game, I'll be able to sit down and actually play it from start to finish. And that makes me happy. Yeah, and I think we are definitely looking forward to um, bringing a super massive game to an audience that may not traditionally play our games, which is an incredible opportunity for us. Um, but yeah, we are also looking forward to hopefully having another title that our longtime fans are going to enjoy um, as much as they have our previous work. Yeah, I think that in, in one of the first conversations we had, actually, it was it needs to, to be, yes, fan service that by the elite people, but it also needs to be a great game that stands on its own, right? People who don't know anything about either Supermassive or Dead by Daylight, they need to be able to say, hey, there's a cool little horror storytelling game and it needs to make sense for them. You don't, it needs to, yeah, stand on its own and, and be a great experience no matter where you come from. And how long has uh, Frank Stone been in, in the works? Yeah, the first conversations, well, yeah, if you if you go back to the very very first conversation with Supermassive, it's probably more than two years ago, I'd say. Uh, but the actual development is a little shorter than that. Oh, right, so it's a relatively short turnaround in the in the grand scheme of things. Um, we we tend to talk about things in sort of terms of half decades, now, don't we? But, but the, the thing is, is Supermassive has an established pipeline. They know how to make these things right, and and actually, it was quite. A, a, illuminating for us to, to watch them do their thing because I'd never seen that sort of process before. It, it's very close to uh, movie making, at least from my perspective. It was great. Because the obvi obvious question, maybe less so if it's, a, if it's been in development for two years, because I think certainly the last two years, that's, as you all know well, better than me, the games industry's uh, gone through a rocky patch. And I know super massive behavior have also been touched as have many companies by layoffs and it did make me wonder if the ambitions for these kind of spin-off projects might have been uh become a bit smaller in recent months um given the wider climate but it sounds like that might not be the case it is i mean obviously it is it is a tough time for the industry i don't think any of us um can or want to deny that but i i think ultimately you know gamers want great games to play um and i think our collaboration with Behavior on the casting of Frank Stone, um, other kind of innovation in the industry, you know, that's what the players want. And, and you know, we're very happy to be bringing this game to them um, and, and hopefully look forward to things kind of turning the corner soon. Um, but but yeah, I think I, I think doing more things like this, bringing more innovation, bringing more creative partnerships, that that's certainly going to, um, I think, hopefully add a little bit of invigoration. Very, very well said. Uh, I mean, and, and it's true. The, the the last year, two years have been tough for everybody. We all have friends who are in, in dire situation. We're about watching this, hoping that it gets better. But I think the best thing we can do is to continue to make great games and to continue to, to foster a, an industry that is healthy, right? And for that, we need to make games and continue to, to have great ideas and invest in them. Uh, it's it's true that we are probably a little more cautious about the partnerships that we get into or the new projects that we kick off, but our desire to to explore new ways to 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 grow the the horror world is certainly not diminished. We're just, I think, maybe a little, uh, yeah, we we take a little more time to to you know dot our eyes and cross our t's. 
Um, while we're in the awkward questions um, area, <laughs> I, might, I might as well stay there. Um, but the, the other uh, big thing in the industry that's recently happened is the video game actors strike. And, and it feels like mm-hmm. something, uh, particularly with regards to Supermassive, that could have some implications and, and for Dead by Daylight as, as well, I'm sure. Um, what's your, well, what's the, what's the kind of view from both companies on, on that? Well, for the casting of Frank Stone, um, we weren't impacted by any of this activity because we used a wonderful UK-based casting crew. Um, I think, um, you know, obviously it's active, it's ongoing, so we are very much monitoring the situation. Um, we know it's all being negotiated, and we're we're looking to see what the outcome is, and hopefully it's all resolved amicably for everyone so we can all move forward together. Um, uh, exactly the same, except you can switch UK for Canada. Uh, and I guess that's the good thing, right? It's, uh, we, we are in Canada here, uh, Supermassive in the UK. Therefore, we're not directly affected in, in our quick circle, but we do business with people around the world. So obviously it has an impact that the, the, the US is currently having this. But like you said, it has zero impact on the casting of Frank Stone and it will have minimal impact on the other productions that, that both of our companies are making because we can continue to to record in Canada and the UK. But we do hope that it's resolved positively for everyone. Yeah, sure. A slightly left field one, which which might sound like more of a downer than I mean it to, but hopefully it'll, <laughs> it'll, it'll spark some affectionate answers. Because I think, obviously, uh, another sad piece of news was um, Game Informer closing quite suddenly. And I, I oh, believe yeah. Frank Stone was one of the last... N- n- not one of the... It's the legendary last ever edition of the Game Informer magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I did wonder. I just wondered, because I know certainly uh, uh, over on, on, on this side of the Atlantic, I think Game Informer is viewed with a lot of envy because, you know, it used to get this incredible access, as we saw with the, the Frank Stone um, interview. And I, I, I guess being in, in North America, it was an even more significant presence. I just wondered, well, first of all, how it f- felt um, must be bittersweet to be the last game <laughs> to ever be featured on the front of it. But um, just if you had any further thoughts on it, because I'm, I'm assuming you must have dealt with them a little bit over the years, um, just now now that it's sort of gone. Well, I, I, obviously, it's a it, it's a huge it's a huge loss, um, you know, to be losing such a iconic publication that had been in business for as long as they have. Um, but I I have to say, on a, from a personal standpoint, I'm incredibly honored to have um, been been featured in the magazine. Um, and and the, the the team that we worked with was absolutely fantastic. The the coverage was wonderful. Um, and I'm I'm grateful that I personally had that opportunity. And I'm grateful that the casting of Frank Stone um, was able to make. A final appearance in the magazine. Very well said. I, you're a tough hack to follow. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it was great, and even that whole. Uh, we spent two days in the office uh, with the with the journalists, and and we had a great time, and it was fun to be able to to sort of go down memory lane at least for uh, Dave Richard, uh, the creative director, and and me. We spent a little bit of time also talking about the the genesis of Dead by Daylight, and then talking to to Tracy and Steve about. The, the casting of Frank Stone, all of it was super fun. The cover is gorgeous. I, I'm happy that I have a physical copy here in my office now. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, it was a sad news for everybody. I mean, it's such a, a, a tentpole of, of video game journalism, right? So, yeah, it'll be, it'll be... It's a bummer. Yes, be, be much missed, definitely, yeah, and uh, it's a shame that currently there's not an archive or anything, um, but people are working on that, so fingers crossed. Um, but, well, all right, thank you for indulging um, my uh, Eeyore side. Um, just as we uh, wrap up, um, just kind of final thoughts. I suppose, what are you... Um, Frank Stone's out pretty soon. What are you most excited about people um, uh, experiencing when they get their hands on it? And... Do you think, I know it's not out, it might be early days to us, but could we see any more crossovers like this from you guys in the future? Uh, Obviously, we wouldn't be able to talk about it if it's going to happen. What I can say is uh, it was super fun to work with Supermassive. I'm ridiculously proud of the the result of this partnership. Uh, I can't wait to sit and watch people play this game. I mean, I'm going to play it and I'm going to enjoy it, but I'm, I cannot wait to watch content creators play this game and show us what it makes them feel. Because that's, that's the whole point, right? We create these kind of things to give people 
an experience to give people strong emotions and i know for a fact that it's gonna happen now i can't wait to just witness it Absolutely. And just, yeah, absolutely ditto to what Matt said. It's been an incredible collaboration with Behavior. I cannot wait to see this game in people's hands. I cannot wait to the Easter eggs that they find, what they think, if, if they find them all, I'm sure, I'm sure some people will. Um, but, but yeah, I, I just can't wait to see it. This is a, absolutely a labor of love um, from both teams. And, and yeah, seeing it out in, in the public and seeing how people respond to it is, is going to be wonderful. And as far as for the future, I mean, we can never tell, uh, but uh, as for behavior, I can tell you there is still a very strong desire to tell more stories of the Dead by Daylight universe, to give people more ways to experience that. So who knows what the future is, right? Thanks again both for your time. All, all the best for the launch and, and good luck if you're brave in Gamescom um, <laughs> this month. Thank you very much. All right. Always, always a pleasure. Thanks very much for your time. Thanks Appreciate so much, it. Tom.